The following feature presentation is part of the Skywalking Network. This is what you can look forward to on episode 436 of Skywalking Through Neverland. <laughs> which Richard is obsessed with. Richard has his own doll. I have Action a Action figure. Now, Richard, was this your first time, like, noticing that? You know, on new toys like Ahsoka. See, it always comes down to Han shooting first. <laughs> Richard, this is like your nightmare. It is. I don't like anything about this. <laughs> Are you ready? Welcome to Neverland. Here we go. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Disneyland is your land. When I first made Star Wars, everybody in Hollywood said, well, this is a movie Disney should have made. You're more than just fans. You're family. <laughs> Best day ever! <laughs> Secrets love. It's about family, and that's what's so powerful about it. Hey, hey. You use a bird to write with. It's called tweeting. When we visit the world of Disney, we never grow old. It's a Peter Pan, never, never land that keeps us young in heart. This is Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi, and you are skywalking through Neverland. I have a good feeling about this. Hey, hey, Skywalkers! Will Luke Skywalker finish his Jedi training? Will Darth Vader reflect back to his Clone War tactics? And will there be a betrayal at Bespin? All that will be answered very shortly, but until then, we want to welcome you back to Skywalking, Skywalking Through Neverland. Neverland. I am Richard Woloski, but now everyone please say hello to my sweetie wife Sarah, who is wearing Wanda lipstick and a Wanda t-shirt. Because they all tie into Marvel. Yeah, I figured I'd be Wanda Marvelous today. You know what? You hit it right on the head there. Perfect. <laughs> it's a deep cut, but everyone watching, they, they figured it out. They know what's going on. Absolutely. All right, Skywalkers, we are your enthusiastic podcast destination for the many decades of your Star Wars, Disney, and Marvel fandom. So it's time for your weekly Wookiee hug. <laughs> And your little sprinkle of pixie dust for our family of Skywalkers. Now, in this episode, we are talking about classic Marvel Star Wars comic number 43, Betrayal at Bespin. And this is the fifth of six parts of the Empire Strikes Back comic adaptation. So after we cover the sixth issue, we will then release our Long Beach Comic Con panel where we did a live presentation of the issue death probe how much fun was that that was super fun and i do have to say that i based today's uh live stream on that live presentation mm -hmm. yeah so we were very excited about this because at that point death probe marvel got to expand the story past the events of the empire strikes back and it was the first media to do show to do so after that uh, movie had come out Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now we had new characters to play with, like the probe droid. Yes! Or or the probot. Oh. Watch the episode to to figure out which one it is. Probe droid or probot. Yes. Alright, now we are being sponsored by Small World Vacations, and they are a diamond level Disney vacation planner travel agency and can help you book your trip to a Disney park around the world. And best of all, this service is free free of charge, so head over there to smallworldvacations.com for a no-obligation price quote and tell them Skywalking Through Neverland sent you. Now, we are recording this from Long Beach, California on October the 10th, 2023. So now we got to do our Halloween countdown. Sarah, how many more days until Halloween? All right, everybody, how many more days? Yeah, Type it in the, the comment, to comments. Today's the 10th. How many more days until October 31st? <laughs> There's a lot of you watching right now. I don't see many comments, though. Um, okay. I'm going to say 21, 21 days. 21 more days. You yes. hit it right on the head there. Three, Wait, three but, more weeks. And I think it's five months till my birthday. Exactly. Because September oh. is my half birthday, right? And so October, yes, five months. That's, That's how that works. It is. <laughs> Very awesome. That's exciting. Now, I'm, I'm excited for Halloween, but it's coming too quickly. 
Yes. October's flying by. It it's really the 10th. is. What uh, happened? Uh, Ahsoka Where? and uh, Loki. Uh, okay. And, and Dancing and We did, we with did the, a lot of stuff we did a lot during of stuff. the first couple of days of October. That's so, true. Wow. But put the brakes on October. Yeah. <laughs> we don't, we don't, as much as we love Halloween, we don't want you to come that quickly. <laughs> well, instead of looking ahead, let's look back. So what happened today in Star Wars history? Well, on this date, October the 10th in 1967, the world welcome little Michael Giacchino. <laughs> Today is his 56th birthday. Wow. And we all know Michael Giacchino. He was the first composer to compose a score to a Star Wars film, which was Rogue One, after John Williams. Right. Now, uh, yeah. What about the Clone Wars? Didn't the Clone Wars come out? 2008? Yes, it... Oh, you're right. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Addendum there. Addendum. A, a live action Live action, film. yeah. If you look, if you listen back to the audio, I did say live action. Oh, okay. I could cut that in. Ready? Live action. He was the first composer to compose a score to a Star Wars live action film, which was Rogue One, after John Williams. See? Live action. I said it right there. It's right there in the audio, which was not re-edited. <laughs> however, however, this was not his first Star Wars score. No. Can I guess? Because I didn't read the notes. Okay, go ahead and guess. Uh, from well, Star Tours, right? Yes, it in was. Disneyland. Uh, 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 I, need a, I need a full answer. He he did like a Star no, no, Tours. I, I need a full what? answer, not just Star Tours. Star Tours, the adventures continue. There you go. See? Okay. See, I can be nitpicky too. <laughs> well, I know my Star Wars S from Disney. Okay. There you go. Okay. <laughs> All right, awesome. Uh, all right, but he he isn't just a composer. He's also an actor. In The Force Awakens, Michael Giacchino played Stormtrooper FN3181 in the Jakku village ambush scene where he dragged Poe Dameron to Kyle to Kylo Ren for questioning. Really? Yeah. Did I know this? Probably. I feel like we would have talked about this, but you, I don't remember. You see the two stormtroopers dragging Poe. Right. And Poe looks back at the laser bolt that's hanging in the air. Oh, oh. Yeah, he's one of those stormtroopers. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. You learn something new every day. I didn't and, know that. And he also played a Sith trooper in The Rise of Skywalker. Wow. Now, last year, we all enjoyed his feature film debut when he directed Werewolf by Night. Remember that awesome black and white film that really harken back to the noir film film days and era of the Universal Studios monsters. Yes. Well, guess what? They're going to ruin that. I know. They're At the end of this month, they're going to release Werewolf by Night in full color. Yeah. But it's going to be like based on gothic colors or something. I don't know. But still, it's in color. The whole, the whole point of it was to reflect back to the Universal Studios monster movies. Right. Those weren't in color. I really enjoyed that, too. I loved it being in black and white because when you put parameters on something, often that makes you be more creative in the space that you have. Oh, especially the lighting. Yeah. It wasn't until the last, like, what, two, three minutes where it turned to full color? Oh, that's right. Yeah. And, th and that yeah. worked. That worked perfectly. That was great. So happy birthday to Michael Giacchino. We hope you're celebrating your 56th birthday like... Like you should. And sorry, Sarah didn't send you a message like you sent to her on her birthday. Go ahead. You know what? Do it right now. Michael Giacchino, I'm so excited that it's your birthday. Have a happy, happy birthday. We talk about you all the time here at Skywalking Through Neverland. So you have some fans wishing you a happy birthday. Michael Giacchino sent you a birthday message a couple of years ago. And now you sent one to him. So check. check. <laughs> Wasn't that well thought out, but... Thanks for giving me that opportunity. All right. <laughs> All right. You know what? The check mark still applies. Okay. All right. Now let's move on to things, things we, we want, want to share. share. Things we want to share. Things we want to share. Things we want to share. All right, Skywalkers. So you might have seen some photos come up on Skywalking Pod and on Jedi Tink and on my Facebook page, but... Me and Courtney and Kelly Turkell and Bryn McKinnon all went to Oogie Boogie Bash. We had a girls' night. And we dressed up 
So we were so enamored with Rogers the Musical when it came out over the summer at DCA. And it's gone now, unfortunately, but we can still listen to the soundtrack on streaming services. But we were so enamored with that, that it was Kelly who brought up, I think that day, like when we were, when we were formulating ideas for Oogie Boogie Bash costumes, hey, why don't we be the Starkettes? Because there was three of us girls and then Bryn wanted to join us. So we were like, oh, well, Starkettes can't exist without Captain America. So you can be our Captain America. And so in the show, the Starkettes are like the three muses almost. They tell the story. They, they come nearly every scene and like tell the story of Steve Rogers. So a la Little Shop of Horrors. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or I was thinking Hercules, but yes. Or Hercules. Yes. <laughs> So, so yeah, and they're so cute. They have like these 1940s outfits. So we got our hair and makeup and our outfits all 1940s. And then Bryn was our kind of dressed down Steve Rogers from the musical in his outfit that he wears, which is like a t-shirt and this nice cool jacket. So looked really amazing. This just in from Pierre Kelly. The Star Cats is better than the Spice Girls. Wow. Or should I say they, they are better than the Spice Girls? To be grammatically correct. <laughs> Thank you, Pierre. So now you get a lot of stories from that night. We do because people who who recognized us loved us. Like a lot of people didn't get it. But when we walked into Avengers Campus or any of the photo pass photographers near the Hyperion Theater where the show came, mm -hmm. they knew us. So there will be a new Neverland Clubhouse episode coming out within the week. And it's going to be on video as well. And I recommend you watch the video version because all we played pictures as we went. But all four of us talk about our experience at Oogie Boogie Bash. And just so you guys know, the Neverland Clubhouse will now, all old episodes and new episodes will be on the Skywalking Through Neverland podcast feed. So you don't need to subscribe to any other special feed. It will all be on Skywalking Through Neverland. Also, the video will come out on Skywalking Through Neverland as well. It'll just be on the Neverland Clubhouse playlist. Yeah. So looking forward to that. But when you were there, you got some merchandise, didn't you? I did get some merchandise because this is the first time. Okay, you guys know I love new emos because I post all the time. I change them out in their little outfits for each season. Well, they now have an Ahsoka new emo. Oh my goodness, this little Ahsoka plush, you can pose her arms, you can pose her legs, you can stand her up, you can dress her in different outfits, but how cute is she? I am freaking out, and basically I had to have her, and I do have to say that I think she's going to sell out pretty quick, because when I went in at like 12 p.m. on Oogie Boogie Bash Day, there was a ton of her. And then when I went back at midnight to buy her, there was like two left. And then I couldn't find this outfit anywhere. And I had to go back into Disneyland to get the outfit. So, so yeah. They put her in season two of the Clone Wars outfit. Yeah. Well, okay. So I'm going to do, I'm going to undress her. Oh, no, it's are, okay. Are, are any kids watching? No, she comes, she comes with an outfit and she has little, these booties are part of the outfit too, but she comes in more of a, what, what the Ahsoka what outfit would this be? This, yeah, the, the original, the, like Ahsoka from the live action, would you say? Yeah. Because yeah, it's more gray. Yeah, but she just needs that that shawl. Then she yeah. would be the Ahsoka from the TV right. show. But, so, but I had to get the dress, come on, because she looks so cute. Now, you know they're going to make more oh, yeah. for other outfits. Oh, yeah. Like, well, where, I where's can the dress halter her. Top? I, I, well, she can't wear the halter top because she doesn't oh. have skin underneath. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, that's oh. Unless they make, yeah. They'll, they'll make another new emo yeah. of Ahsoka. Oh, more merchandising. I know. Disney, can you handle it? But the thing is, with new emos, you can dress them in anything. So any previous outfits I have, like my Halloween outfits, or like I can even put her in a Rapunzel dress if I want, because I have Rapunzel that came with her Rapun Rapunzel dress. So you can do whatever you want and dress them up. Ah, they're so cute. Very, very it. cute. All right, we're going to move on. Or okay. Sarah's just going to be cuddling with her toys. <laughs> All right, so a couple of weeks ago, we asked Skywalkers to send in your 10th anniversary messages because we just hit our 10th anniversary uh, here at Skywalking Through Neverland, and we were just inundated with messages and can't thank you enough for sending in all those messages, but we didn't want to play all the messages on that 10th anniversary episode because the whole episode would have been just messages, so you came up with the idea, 
let's just release a couple per episode. Yeah, like three or so, and it's going to last us at least a couple months, Mm -hmm. especially if you guys keep sending in messages, which we love. So today, we're going to play three messages. So first, let us hear from Bryn McKinnon, one of my Oogie Boogie Bash girls. Or Cap, as we like to call her. Hey, hey, Richard and Sarah, it's Bryn. I just wanted to wish you a happy 10th anniversary for Skywalking Through Neverland. What a huge accomplishment. I mean, to build a consistently great show that has also created a community for Star Wars and Disney fans, for people who want a place for positive celebration of their fandoms and a place to learn and reminisce and to grow. I mean... It's been so much work and has required so much dedication and energy and time and love from you guys, and you just put it all in there. Um, You give us not just a podcast that's amazing. You give us live shows. You give us meetups, Zoom meetups. You gave us an entire virtual Star Wars convention during the early COVID-19 years, and you also built a network of really fantastic shows in their own right. I mean you you're so inspiring and you just give us so much um and I'm just so thankful for you so I'm raising my glass to you both and to all the people behind the scenes who've helped support um you did to make the show in all sorts of ways so thanks for a fantastic 10 years I would I would normally say like let's hope for 10 more but I actually just want to take a second and just appreciate the 10 years and I know there's more coming and I can't wait for it but right now just cheers. And once again it's not too late for people to send in messages now just record it on your phone and, or anywhere else you'd like and send it to share at skywalking through neverland.com it can be short it can be long video it can be just audio horizontal vertically Mm -hmm. Any way you like. Yeah. So let's hear one from Chica Fent. This is an audio message as well. Hey, Richard and Sarah. It's the Chica Fent family. We just wanted to wish you a happy 10th anniversary on your podcast. So it can be a long one or a short one. We love it. We love any messages and we really appreciate them all. All right. So this next one is from our good friend, D. Tails, who sent in a video message. Mm -hmm. Hello there. (laughs) Hey Sarah, hey Richard, Skywalking through Neverland fans. This is your 90s pop star legend details saying, hey, how you doing? Congratulations, happy anniversary. Um, I am thrilled to call you guys friends. I'm thrilled to have you guys part of my early years in interviewing um, uh, for Star Wars, etc. Um, you were in my top three for our first first three interviews, and when I think it was Martin Keeler or that book or someone, Martin Keeler maybe, who suggested speaking to you. Um, after, I didn't even watch one of your podcasts all the way through. I just loved your enthusiasm and love for the love for the arts, love for the Disney projects, love for anything that's that has an entertainment value to it. Um, unashamedly so and why should we so I really want to say thank you um, you helped put me out there on the map um, and help introduce me to a lot more like-minded fans like ourselves um, I cherish the moments that we met um, in LA I love you guys to death and I'll always hold on to the memory of staggering back to the car with you Richard um, after it's a small world after all So much love and love. Remember this? (laughs) We love you too, details. Yeah, and the shirt he was wearing was from the Haunted Hayride, where he celebrated his first Halloween. Yes. I can't tell you how much that meant to me. It was so amazing. And that was the first time he went trick-or-treating too, because they even had a maze that was set up like trick-or-treat. Yeah. Right? You go to a door, you knock on it, and you say trick or treat, and something pops out. One of the highlights of Skywalking Through Neverland is just introducing details to Halloween. Mm-hmm. And if anyone who does not know details, he is a creature and droid performer for, all, for the Disney Star Wars films. Yeah. 
And he so was also cool. in an episode of Willow. So, And he was in Rebel Spy Reject, which is his biggest, biggest credit. Absolutely. All right. Kevin Toft is also wishing us a happy 10th anniversary. Now, this does not take the place of actually sending over uh, uh, audio or video message. Okay? Yeah, Kevin, we want it. Share <laughs> at skywalkingthroughneverland.com. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. With that, let's get into classic Marvel Star Wars comics. Issue 43, Betrayal at Bespin. Betrayal at Bespin, my my issue, my personal issue, hermetically sealed since 1980. So does that mean I can touch no, it? No, you cannot touch it. Put, put that hand down. No. <laughs> All right. Now, if this is the first time you've heard our classic Marvel Star Wars comics breakdown, or if you never knew the history behind the comics, let's give everyone a, a very brief overview of of the series, okay? Okay. All right, so Charles Lippincott, he was the, he was in charge of marketing Star Wars, and he brought Star Wars to Marvel and Stan Lee. And Stan Lee, Stan Lee just passed. He said, oh. no, I'm good. Don't want it. Movies don't really do well. However, Roy Thomas, he's our savior. Roy Thomas loved the idea of Star Wars and, and convinced Stan Lee to pick it up. Just pick it up. Let's just do the adaptation, okay? What's the worst that could happen? And now, <laughs> now look at this. We have a whole expanded universe. We have new characters, new and exciting characters. Now, Marvel was the first to expand the universe starting back in 1977. And these comics ran all the way to 1986. And we got so many beloved characters in the 107 issues published, many of which have made the transition into the official Star Wars canon. Like, like details. Details oh. we just saw come up. He gave us that message. He was a Cloud Rider in Solo, a Star Wars story. And Cloud Riders came from classic Marvel Star Wars comics. Yeah, like the first expanded story arc mm -hmm. in classic Marvel, mm -hmm. which which we, we read about. Yes, that we did. That was a really fun series to go over. I think we started that in 2015. Yeah. So go back to listen. And those, those classic Marvels were really tied into our episode. Then we, then we made the classic Marvel into its own podcast. Then we brought it back into the Skywalking Through Neverland episodes. Well, it's all in our same feed, though. Right. The podcast feed. Right. Yes. Yeah, but other characters in that have been brought into Star Wars canon now have included Jackson, the seven-foot green bunny mercenary, which Richard <laughs> is obsessed with. Richard has his own doll. I have Action Ahsoka. Action figure. I have Ahsoka doll. Richard has Jackson doll. Uh huh. I'm I'm happy with that. <laughs> also, we have Crimson Jack. And many of you Skywalkers may know Crimson Jack because I cosplayed as Crimson Jack for one of the run Disney races. Yes, and I did Jackson. Yeah, yeah remember? <laughs> yeah. So I was Jackson. You mm -hmm. were Crimson. You were you made an amazing Crimson Jack, by the way. I loved it. Also, Valance the Hunter. Valance served as a huge. Um, character in, what is it, the Bounty Hunters series just yeah. recently. Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. it is Valance. I know we were flip-flopping back and forth between, is it Valance, Valance or Valance? Right. But I just saw an interview where they said, yeah, it's well, he was named after Liberty Valance. Liberty Valance, the man who shot Liberty Valance. Right. So now we know. Yep. And also, who jibs? Who jibs? For better or for worse. Uh, yeah, it was confirmed that the who jib from the the Book of Boba Fett, which that hut was using as a sponge. <sighs> that was a hooja, but... I don't get it. Yeah. They'll, they'll come back in a bigger and better way, but some of the comics are already bringing back hoojibs. Yes. But we want to see them in the films or TV shows. Mm. Okay. All right. Now, the aforementioned Cloud Riders came from, from Marvel Comics. So many, not just characters, but stories and situations. And names. And, yeah, and, and the names, too. So... After the 107 issues, Star Wars was heading into the dark time, so Marvel decided to call it quits. Mm. 
But in 2019, Marvel released issue 108 in celebration of their 80th anniversary. And this issue was titled Forever Crimson. And this was a sequel to issue 50 from 1981 titled Crimson Forever. Forever Crimson, Crimson Forever. Do you see that? Yeah. And also, we are... We do have this YouTube version of the video, and that's where you'll see these covers here. We'll be illustrating all that we're talking about on our YouTube version. So this issue, uh, Forever Crimson 108, it reunites Han Solo, Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, Chewbacca, R2 and 3PO with Jackson, Amaza Fox Train, Domina Tag, and Valance the Hunter. It's the best of. It's the, it's the best of classic Marvel Star Wars comics in one issue. <laughs> I love this so much. Amazing. All right. So now moving forward on upcoming episodes where we break down the, the classic issues, we'll give you a little more history of the classic Marvel Star Wars comics. How does that sound? That sounds amazing. I would love that. Okay. And you're, you're a history, a resident history buff. So that is amazing. All right. Now I am here to take you through these classic stories share memories of reading these comics as a kid, and to get you caught up with these characters and situations that every Star Wars fan must know. Because as we've noted in the past, there are several connections and parallels to the current films, comics, novels, and in this issue, there's a mention of a future Star Wars film title, and Darth Vader remembers an infiltration trick from the Clone Wars. Wow. Mm-hmm. A lot of parallels. And it's really fun because Richard and I are of such different generations growing up. So he read these comics as a kid, or at least looked at them, whereas I am reading these comics all for the very first time. And I'm sharing my 21st century views of these comments, but I'm also an artist, so I have many artistic thoughts on them. And I love comparing the different styles that the various artists bring to the series, and just in general, you know, looking at it from an artistic perspective. Seeing how our anniversary is coming up on October 25th, maybe I'll let you take out this issue, okay? Take it out of its Mylar bag. Well, the previous issue has the Han and Leia love scene in it. I want that one. It's this one, one or, or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, as a reminder, in the last issue, 42, Luke begins his training with Jedi Master Yoda. Meanwhile, Darth Vader contracts bounty hunters to search for the Millennium Falcon, which had just escaped the deadly asteroid field. Now, Han sets course for the Bespin system to see his old friend, Lando Calrissian. Now, this issue, 43, Betrayal at Bespin, was released on October 28th, 1980. So this is still six issues away from when Sarah was born. Yep. So you, so you, you, weren't, you weren't even around when this <laughs> issue came out. Isn't that weird? <laughs> All right, now, this, this adaptation was written by Archie Goodwin, based on the script by Lee Brackett and Lawrence Kasdan, with the story by George Lucas, the artwork is by Al Williamson, Carlos Garzon, and Glennis Wine. Cover art by Al Williamson and Carlos Garzon. So now let's talk about this cover art. Yes! So here we see Han Solo, Princess Leia, and Chewbacca. They're on the left side of the page, and they're holding blasters on Lando Calrissian, Lobot and a Bespin security guard on Cloud City and they're on the landing platform but they're kind of scrunched together because the nature of a comic cover mm -hmm. right and the background is interesting it's got the gold Cloud City spires but behind it you have this bright pink background I guess representing the Bespin gases right the pink sky okay yeah all right so so give us your your impression your your thoughts when you first saw this this cover Okay, well, I feel like it looks like Naboo is infiltrating this comic. And that's mostly because in the foreground, <laughs> I, no. it, you know what? We see in the foreground, we see this kind of vase. It's an urn. An urn and flowers. It's gold. It's bright. It's like kind of where my eye goes. And it looks like it's right out of the Naboo balcony. Now, Richard, was this your first time like noticing that? <laughs> And I'm like, what is she talking about? 
It's right there. Yeah. Uh, this is the first time in 43 years I've ever noticed that. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> uh, and those of you watching live, please give us your opinions on this cover. But, yeah, to me, this is a very busy cover uh, because you've got you've got six characters here. And they're all kind of small. None of them is really the focal point, right? Like, right in the middle is Cloud City sort of in the background. But then in the foreground and really bright is is like these flowers that are bright pink and bright green and this gold urn which is a deeper gold than the light gold of the Naboo spires. So my eye doesn't know where to look but it just keeps settling on that vase and flowers which I guess is not the case with you. Not whatsoever. <laughs> mm -mm. So what about you then? What do you think of this cover? I've always liked this cover even though it really misrepresents what happened in the film. But, you know, being a comic cover, it has to stress tension. Because if you just had Han, Leia, and Chewie just talking to Lando with no blasters, it doesn't yeah. really stress, hey, this is an issue. You got to get to see what happens. Even though we'd already seen the film at this point. So we knew, like, okay, this this is a misrepresentation. Now, the, the pink sky really threw me as a kid. But then I remembered, wait a minute. Pink was used a lot in merchandising for boys' toys. So check this out right here. This is a picture of how Batman was marketed to little boys in pink <laughs> boxes. Oh, my goodness. With bright yellow Batman logo. So so I, I guess Pink never, pink never really it took me out of it. Maybe for a half a second. It's like, hey, what is this? And then, oh, wait a minute. This, this fits in. This mm. tracks for boys. Okay. And I, I guess these these uh, companies just wanted to let boys know that, hey, anyone can like any color. <laughs> yeah. In every one of these Batman toys, he always came in a pink blister card or a pink package. Wow. Yeah. Jeff Caffrey tuning in. Hello, Jeff. He's saying fabulous packaging. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. Very nostalgic. <laughs> They're re-releasing these, these toys again. And I, I got to get them. Oh my gosh! Yeah, really? It just hits those nostalgic nerves. Mm -hmm. You don't want you don't want new toys like Ahsoka. Well, they're they're new old toys. Okay. All right. So now we always put the the classic Marvel Star Wars comics issue cover mm -hmm. out to our Facebook group and the page. We ask the Skywalkers, please, please tell us your comments on these covers so we can read them on the show. So let's read one here from Don Glover, who says, Very interesting choice of building shape, especially since there were no buildings in the movie. That's a head scratcher. And then Jeffrey Chandler chimed in, Don Glover, that's Cloud City. Definitely the cityscape was shown numerous times as the Falcon is escorted onto the landing platform. And then Don Glover comes back with, Wow, I just went back and checked. I had blotted that whole landing sequence from my mind. Either that or it has just been so long since I last watched it. <laughs> That's so funny. Well, they made a whole point of this in the special edition yeah. to show all these buildings. Yeah, they made like so many more cityscapes. <laughs> so and... right now, Rick McCallum's like, ah, oh, dang it. We, di we didn't get done. We didn't get done. <laughs> all right. Eric Unkenhout, he writes, I love the color contrast between the purplish background and the buildings in the foreground. So now he's seeing this as purple. Yeah, I see definitely hot pink, mm. but or fuchsia, really. But hey, maybe maybe his monitor screen. Okay. Who each, knows? Each is their own. Yeah. All right, let's wrap it up with Rex Gordon, who writes, Another great cover, amazing art. Being a Bespin security guard was a great job. Future is so bright, he had to wear shades. Make mine marvel. This is the first time I'm noticing that Bespin security guard over to there to the right. He's yeah. wearing sunglasses. He is. Or some kind of visors. <laughs> So look at this. This is why we're going through all these. Yeah. Stacy's is weighing in. She says hot pink is what she sees. Okay. Excellent. So anyone, anyone else in the sky chat, do you see purple or hot pink? <laughs> Let us know. All I see is this vase and flowers from Naboo. That, that could be an urn from maybe the, the past proprietor, the past administrator of Cloud City because yes. Lando oh. won it. Oh. <laughs> so I wonder how he won it. And where did this last Baron administrator go? No one has seen him since. He's right there in the urn. You're so bad. All right, now let's get into the issue. Okay. Oh, so looking forward to this. That's Batman. He's not in this issue. <laughs> All right, now explain this, this splash page here. Hold on, hold on. We got comments. 
They're all coming up like 30 seconds after we talked about it. Pierre Kelly says purple. Purple? Jeff Caffrey says pink. <laughs> and Stacy says... That's- <laughs> oh, that's, that's dark with the yeah, urn. With the urn, yeah. yes. I, I, you know what? I call it as I see them. <laughs> All right, Sarah, call the splash page as you see it. Well, here's a cover. <laughs> All right. I love this splash page. It continues to be better than the cover. I feel like the last couple episodes, I have liked the splash page better than the cover. Now, here we have this breezy, beautiful splash page of golds and light blues. It makes me think of a sky or a city in the clouds, Mm. right? And you have the bold Empire Strikes Back logo sitting at the top left. Then Lando and his magnificent cape is big and central to the picture, which because this is set in Cloud City, this episode really is all about Lando. Mm -hmm. And I, I keep saying episode, I mean issue. We know what you meant. Yes. All right. And his bodyguards and Lobot stand behind him at the top right of the pic. And all of them are facing us the audience, which I like way better than the cover where they're all kind of facing away. Even our heroes are even looking away from us as the audience. So I don't like that. Okay. So that's only the top half of this splash page. Appropriately, clouds form a transition between the characters and a beautiful cloud city cityscape, which is at the bottom of the page. And there's a little cloud car flying in And you can just see it kind of whirring across the screen like they do in the movie, right? And then you can also hear that theme, can't you? Oh, absolutely. See, we get a hum it. We can't play it because copyright. Yeah, and then there's a word box that catches us up on what Luke, Vader, and Boba Fett are doing. My only gripe with this page is that this box could have been a little bigger because look how tiny those words are right there and it's hard to read all that text in one lump block they there's there's some empty space there they could have just elongated the box and maybe put a few paragraphs so mm-hmm. yeah okay all right very nice breakdown all right now let's get into the story here we see the millennium falcon as it's flying towards <sighs> the ralph Macquarie cloud city this ain't no cloud city from the film this is the ralph Macquarie cloud city which looks like a big hamburger and you have two twin pod cloud cars flying towards the Falcon. And all the while, Han Solo gives Princess Leia a little background info on Cloud City as well as his friend Lando Calrissian. And he says, Cloud City, your royalness, it's a Tabana gas mine. Lando won it in a sabac match, or so he claims. Lando and I go... And Leia cuts him off with, way back, so you keep saying, since this is a story she has apparently heard many times before. Yeah, or maybe had maybe Han had just shown her Solo a Star Wars story. <laughs> I don't know. Uh-huh. But again, we have another beautiful splash page number two, which would have made another better cover than the cover we got. I noticed Han didn't tell Leia about that urn and who's in the urn. <laughs> Why is there an urn? <laughs> you brought it up, not me. I did. That's all I see is the flowers in the urn from Naboo. Now, this, this, this reactor shaft is so long. Yes, it but is. In the film... We don't really see how long it is because it's always hidden in the clouds. In the comics, they made it like go on as far as the eye can see. Yes. All right, now the cloud car fires a warning shot and tells them to land on platform 327 and says any deviation will result in their destruction. Now, here we see Lando, Lobot, and the guards come out to meet Han and the others, and Han asks Lando if he recognizes him. This raises a question. Yeah. Is this the first time they've seen each other since the events of Solo, A Star Wars Story? I've kind of always thought that may be the case. What do yeah. you think? And is there a, a book that we're not remembering or a comic or a video game, something? You know what? There is a book that goes over Lando and L337, but I forget if Han is in it. I at Last shot. Hmm. But I can't remember. Yeah, I don't... You guys, let us know. Right. So, okay, yeah. Skywalkers, let us know. Is this the first time they've seen each other? Mm-hmm. Now, this next panel cuts to a low angle below the bridge that appears out of nowhere. Okay, where is the landing platform? Yeah, check this out. What? <laughs> we zoomed in here. Okay, and there's all the word bubble pointing up to the bridge. Yeah. Where's the Falcon? 
yeah, there's no Falcon. Either they walked really fast or something. I, I don't know what is happening here. Wow. All right. Talk about not knowing what's happening here. Look at the next panel. Yeah. They're continuing the conversation. Han and Lando are catching up. And something is in this foreground. What What is that? The blue. The blue, Whatever's in yes. Blue. Yeah. I don't get what that's supposed to be. I don't either. Like, is are we seeing them through some kind of, uh, like, artwork or something? I don't... Well, okay, so look at this previous page. You know, you've got a lot of talking, but you don't see a lot of characters here. Like, they're talking, talking. Uh, all you see is 3PO on this one page. And I feel like the artist had to rush to get this issue out because they're taking these shortcuts of not showing people, but just putting little word bubbles to, like, spaces. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? And that makes sense. Coming up, I've yeah. made note of that. Like, hey, why aren't they showing this? Yeah, there's buildings and silhouettes instead yeah. of the people's faces. Yeah, no, nothing with detail. Right. All right, 3PO then wanders off as the laughing group moves along. <laughs> Now, the, the bronze translator droid is suddenly stopped short by the ugly whine of laser bolts, and 3PO is destroyed. Mm. This this was devastating in the 1979 Empire Strikes Back trailer. Oh, yeah? They showed that shot of 3PO just being blown apart, and it wasn't like we had to wait until next week to see what happened. We had to wait a whole another year until we knew what happened to 3PO. Are we losing 3PO in this trailer? Don't do this to kids. What are you What are you doing, Fox? You're killing us here. Now, I never understood the voice that says in the film, Who are you? That okay. deep kind of muppety voice. It sounds nothing like a stormtrooper. Mm-hmm. You want to play it? I, I know. They, yeah, let's play it in a second. But if they had a stormtrooper sounding voice, then that would give it away. It's a stormtrooper. Right. But yeah. then, if you're going to have a stormtrooper voice, make it sound like a stormtrooper. You know, I never put it together that that was supposed to be a stormtrooper. But if you think about it, once uh, Chewie, Chewie puts three, his yeah, head turns, back on. Yeah. He goes, oh, no. Oh, my. Stormtroopers, stormtroopers. here. Oh, my. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, how did, when did he see stormtroopers? Yeah. Like, so there's a, for some okay. reason, there's a stormtrooper hiding in this little control chamber. Oh. I always thought it was an Ugnaught. But I guess Ugnaughts don't speak English. No, no, yeah. they, they, they oink. They all right, so let, let's listen to this. Okay. Let's, let's all see what we think. How interesting. Who are you? Who am I? Oh, uh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I, I didn't mean to intrude. No, 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 please don't get up. <laughs> all right, first Who of all, that, that that image of 3 people being blasted just wrecked me as a child. Aww. All right, now, now that voice, did that sound anything like a stormtrooper? There's one. Set for stun. No. No. I want answers. Who are you? Yeah. It sounded like uh, an annoyed worker. But why would he blast him? Yeah. Yeah, so that apparently was a stormtrooper because 3PO reveals it later on. They should have taken it out for the special edition. Okay. All right, you know, let's, let's, let's move on because I'm getting aggravated. <laughs> All right, we, we, now, we now go back to Dagobah where Luke is staring at Swamp Thing. <laughs> All right, now look at this panel, the, the bottom panel. Luke is staring off into this tree. <laughs> And yes. you, you just know. You Oh, did I say Swamp Thing? Yes, Man Thing. Man Thing. Man Thing. Okay, Swamp Thing, that's DC. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry. This is, okay, this is Man Thing. Mm. Now, you saw this in Werewolf by Night. But now look at that tree. Look at that tree that Luke is oh, staring yeah. at. It you totally know that that's an Easter egg. That looks the same. <laughs> that's amazing. I love that so much. Now, this just in from our Sky Chat here. Uh, Stacy is weighing in on the Stormtrooper. Who are you? Spoken by maybe an Imperial officer and or a stormtrooper with their helmet off is what she's saying. But we know that stormtroopers never have their buckets off, no, right? No, that's that's that, that's forbidden. And that's what Jeff also is hmm. conjecturing. Maybe he had his helmet off, so he sounded different. But perhaps it was an Imperial officer. But why do that? You you have a voice of a stormtrooper. Use that stormtrooper like right. voice. And why, why didn't 3 people say... Uh, the Imperials are here instead of just narrowing it down to a stormtrooper. Ah, yes. So maybe that trooper just needed a second to take off his helmet just to breathe, and he was hiding in there. That's when 3PO came wandering in. Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay, this this needs to uh, be added to the Certain Point of View Volume (laughs) 2. Yes. Okay, perfect. All right, now let's let's get back here. Now, Luke senses danger in Man-Thing. Mm-hmm. And Yoda says he must go in. Yes. So a shirtless Luke <laughs> enters the tree with Ahsoka's white lightsaber. What? Yeah, How did he get Ahsoka's that? lightsaber? 
Yeah, it's true, though. It looks like it's very white. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he faces off here with Darth Vader, and the two engage in a short battle. It lasts, what, three panels long here. And Luke knocks Vader down, causing the helmet to fall off, revealing Luke's own face. So this is much different than in the film, where you just see the helmet roll off the body, and the, head, the mask explodes, revealing Luke's face. Here, the helmet just flies off, and we see... Darth Vader on the ground, but his head is Luke Skywalker. Right. Yeah, and I think they even say in the comic, oh yeah, Luke says, N no, that's my face, just to make it clear. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah, when I saw Empire, it wasn't too clear that was Luke in that <laughs> helmet. Okay, now I, I just have a note about the art direction of this comic here. Why on earth is this whole Dagobah section, which begins on a previous page, right? It's like a smash cut mm -hmm. on the previous page. Then it goes to the next page where it it ends, and then there's another smash cut to Cloud City. Why is all this Dagobah section not on one full page? Because it would have taken up the perfect amount of space to be on one full page, but instead they kind of jar you, and they don't put like an extra line, like new location, mm. in between the two panels. It's just it's it's very weird, and I I was a little unclear about it. Okay, I think they're just thinking. Well, everyone had seen the film at this point, so we know they know what we're doing here. Yeah, I didn't like it. Okay, All I right. have some more. I have some more issues coming up. Duly noted. Okay. All right now. We cut to Cloud City and passing lazily outside the window of the suite Lando provided the fugitive rebels. Mm-hmm. Okay. I just, I just love that wording. Pa Cloud cars passing lazily outside the window of the suite Lando provide, provided the fugitive rebels. Okay. That's kind of poetic, don't you think? I suppose. All right. Now, the scene plays out as an early script version to the film where Han tries to get close to Leia and she just changes the subject by wondering where Luke is. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the film, Han says that Lando has people that can fix 3PO and they both admit, eh, I don't trust Lando. Right. And Leia, Leia, for some reason, this is another confusing bit. Leia, Leia says, then you're as good as gone, aren't you? Yeah, I never understood did that very well. I I think I think what I made clear about that is that once they No, you know what? No, it's still confusing. <laughs> yeah. I'm like I'm trying to it, Does she know she, she she's fully convinced that Lando is going to double cross them. Well, no, I think what it means. So, if you think about it in Empire Strikes Back, Han was about to leave to pay off the debt to Jabba, mm -hmm. right? But then um, the they got, you know, the Battle of Hoth happened well, and everything, and so yeah. they left. And so, like, now they're at Cloud City, and now Han, maybe he's, like, wanting to go still to pay Jabba. And so, like, once they f find 3PO, he's as good as gone to pay Jabba? I don't know. So here's the dialogue. Here's the point, and they go way, <laughs> way around yeah. to make that point. But... Leia, she never trusted Lando, even when they landed on Cloud City. Right. But she's fully convinced that, okay, well, Han, this is going to be the end of you hmm. if you trust Lando. So not not really that clear. No, it's not. But when you see the film, you just take it and you, you run with it. But we're talking about the comic, not the film, so let's get back. Okay. Now, the scene cuts to outside Cloud City, <laughs> where you can still hear Han and Leia's conversation. <laughs> so once again, they're saving time and having to draw... <laughs> Han and Leia again. And there's this random cloud car outside of Cloud City that you're, like, focused on. It's like, what? why? So apparently, they, they went with the Ralph McQuarrie early production painting of Cloud City, but I've never, I've never seen this ship anywhere. No, because Not in any I production guess, paintings, any early concept pictures. It's, like, half a cloud car. Now, is it cut off here on this panel? But why why do half a cloud car? I don't understand. It's very odd. Well, no, because that wing over here matches that wing there, and oh, it doesn't. Okay. Ha it has a little fin in the back, so it's it's a random ship. Like how does how does this ship get here? Is he he flew in from another comic series? What is this? And it's a focal point, which means nothing because they never refer to it. No, no. See, I'm I'm upset. Let's just move on again. Okay. okay? Well, uh, okay, you're upset. I'm upset. All right, so let's continue to look at this this page here. We're going to zoom in to the to where Leia 
she's wearing the Cloud City Bespin outfit, right? And they even refer to it on the previous page. Like, Han is like, oh, you look nice. And then they you turn the page and you're like expecting to see Leia this nice gown, which is my favorite Leia outfit of all time. And instead... She's sitting crumpled up. She's got the little cape all crumpled up in her lap. You can't see the outfit. And I'm really annoyed. So Marvel, you get a lot to answer for. <laughs> and then in nowhere in this whole issue is there a nice reveal of her beautiful Cloud City Bespin outfit. And I'm sad. You know, do you want, want to just move on then? Because, you know, we can, we'll can. we we'll cut back to later on in the scene, okay? Stacy we... says, you're both upset at a panel, and she's laughing out loud. <laughs> Thanks, Stacy. Well, we take this stuff really seriously, okay? <laughs> All right, let's move All right. on. Now, we, we cut back to this scene, and Han is sticking up oh. for his old friend Lando, mm-hmm. who comes strolling in at that very convenient moment. All right, well, now back on Dagobah... Luke tells Yoda that he saw an image of Ben in the dark tree. And Yoda tells him that he will see many images in his mind. All right, now what does this mean? What what are we talking about here? He he saw Ben in the dark tree. Oh. And we know in The Last Jedi, he was a little upset with Ben. Oh. For for not telling the truth. Right, for lying to him, kind yes. of, by omission. Yeah, we saw a little bit of that in Return of the Jedi, but... He had a lot of time to think on Octu. So what are you thinking when Luke saw an image of Ben in the dark tree? Do you think he's going to the dark side or something? Uh, I think he, a lot of this negativity he's been feeling oh. has been been percolating. And maybe he understands when maybe when he saw Vader on the Death Star, he felt a little connection to the Force. So he knows something's up and he understands the only connection between he... And Vader was Ben, who gave him some background on Darth Vader, that Darth Vader killed Luke's father. So maybe, maybe Luke's just understanding that maybe there's more to the story than Ben actually told me. But at this point, he doesn't know. But he, maybe he felt that little connection to the Force. Okay. Now, this is all speculation, of course. I think you're reaching. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Or what else would that mean? If, he, if Luke is saying, I saw an image of Ben, and... If you go back into the early scripts, maybe you can find where Marvel got this line from. Hmm. Maybe he did see Ben down there. Maybe Ben was trying to gu- maybe Ben was trying to guide him. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. So it could it could mean any any, you know, it's up to your own interpretation. Okay. All right. Now, Luke then tells Yoda that he sees a city in the clouds and his friends are in pain and he must go to them. We then cut back to Cloud City, where we see a not-so-subtle cameo. All right, look down there to the lower left. Bottom panel okay, here. Okay, who, who, who is that? Who does that who, look like? Yes. What reference photo did they look at for this little Cloud City citizen cameo? Give up? Let's reveal it. There's George Lucas. <laughs> oh. oh, Jeff got it. <laughs> Jeff got it just in time. <laughs> Jeff Jeff Caffrey in the sky chat came up with George Lucas. And so did Stacy. So did Stacy. That was, yeah. Excellent. <laughs> maybe, maybe it wasn't a not so subtle cameo. <laughs> yeah, and you found this great reference photo here of George Lucas and Anthony Daniels as 3PO out on the Tatooine desert. Mm-hmm. Um, Anthony doesn't is not screwed into his helmet Mm-mm. at this moment. Yeah, so you can see where the artist got, got this picture of George and said, hey, let's put George in here, see if George notices. Yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> All right, and then we cut to Lando, who leads the others to the refreshments, and most likely not a trap, right? This is not a trap. Oh, not at all. So, so Leia's, all of, of her worries, <laughs> they're, you know, they're, they're not really going to play out here because this is not a trap. <laughs> and once again, they're walking on a very long exterior bridge oh this top left panel yeah. here yeah it's very long now it's gonna take them at least 30 minutes before they reach those refreshments which isn't gonna make chewbacca very happy at all <laughs> and now he, look at this here leia comments on how lovely this outpost is and lando replies it's quite special here you could grow to like it <laughs> didn't she just say didn't she just say it was lovely yeah when well, he comes back with you could grow to like it Apparently, you're not listening to what I'm saying. Right, right, right. I gotcha. Okay. Lando, come on. <laughs> you know what? Maybe if she were L337, would would you pay attention then? 
<laughs> I don't know. Now, this next panel shows they still have a very long way to go. So between this panel and the next, when they're they're at the dining hall door, right. they must have stopped talking because that conversation picks up from one panel to the next. Oh, right. But yeah, they get a long way to go. They're so tiny on that bridge. So do they stop the conversation only to pick it up at the door? Yes. All right, now Stacy in the Sky Chat says, Richard, they need to work up an appetite, so a good long walk. <laughs> nice. I'm not going to disagree. <laughs> That's awesome. And again, you don't see Leia's full outfit. I'm sorry. I'm just saying. I'm sorry. Now, the door slides open, revealing Darth Vader and Boba Fett. Han, oh. Han and Lando have a little exchange, then... Han fires his blaster. But in the film, Han shot first, then he and Lando have, have an exchange. Yep. See, it always comes down to Han shooting first. <laughs> and, and Lando says, I had no choice. They arrived right before you did. And it wasn't until this comic where I understood what Lando was saying. He, he kind of like scrunches all of his words together. So what did you think he was saying? I, I had no idea. Oh, you I couldn't even know. make it out. They, they arrived right before you did. Yeah, he does say it kind of fast, but I, I always heard... Yeah, it's kind of like over the clenched jaw. I had no choice. They arrived right before you did. Interesting. Well, you know, he's very tense. I mean, the Darth Vader is Well, in the I room. understand that. You're going to have a meal with Darth Vader. It, How does that even work? I don't know. <laughs> but it wasn't until this comic where I understood what he was... What Lando was saying. Now, I do have to say, though... Uh, that I love this panel, this middle panel here, that's depicting this dinner scene. The door opens and the reveal of Vader and Boba Fett because it's just a great reference to the film. And I mean, I myself could see the scene playing in my mind just looking at that at that picture. So I really like it. All right. Now, in this next panel, Han throws his blaster to Vader. <laughs> Look at that up top there. It's like he's just casually throwing. Like Vader says, hey, can I have your blaster, please? And Han goes, here you go. It does look really funny. And the narration then reads, Somewhere behind the trio of rebels comes the familiar clatter of stormtrooper boots. <gasps> Where are the stormtrooper boots? Where yeah. are the stormtroopers? So once again, Marvel is cutting some corners by not showing it. And they're they're not abiding to the rule of show it, don't say it. Yep. I want to see stormtroopers. I know you do. But it's not gonna happen because they don't have time. All right, you know what? I'm I'm just upset. I could I could really use a snack. You could. So, yeah. So I think this is a good moment to pause for a commercial break. We'll return after these messages. It's a Marvel and Hostess commercial break, everybody. Now this commercial break is brought to us by Hostess Fruit Pies with the Marvel Hostess crossover story, Captain America. In Fury Unleashed. Ugh. All right, so Sarah, you read the narration, and you also, what else do you want to read here? Do you want to read... Oh, um, Fury? Should I be... The Goon. Fury? You read Goon. Oh. All right. Okay. So you can read the narration, and you read Goon, and I'll read Captain America and Fury, and can I, can I read Trapster? Yes. He's the main bad guy. He's, he's the Does Thanos Goon, Goon of this. Goon has like one line. I uh, know he got a couple of lines. Okay. Well, Maybe, I'll read the I narration. He's right. got one line. Okay. All right. Th th then, then work it up. Work it up. <laughs> okay, here we go. The story opens as Captain America smashes through a steel door. The trapster's at it again. One trap leads to another. Cap then sees Agent Fury being strangled. Better not come close, Cap. The trapster's goon got me by the neck. Meanwhile, the trapster watches from another room. Ha! We'll see how Captain America solves this dilemma. Then Captain America says, My strength and my shield won't solve this mess, but strategy can. Cap then throws his shield, which is filled with hostess fruit pies at the trapster's goon. Okay, you big overgrown Goliath. I bet you can't wait to get your hands on these hostess fruit pies. What is Fury compared to this great taste? Real fruit filling. Light, tender crust. Hostess fruit pies? That's using your brains, Cap. Trapster? Hostess fruit pies? Curses! Captain America is as smart as he is strong. You get a big delight in every bite of Hostess fruit pies. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. I know. I know. That was, that was brilliant. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. 
says Stacy. Boy, is if Chris Evans ever saw this, he's like, oh, my job's in jeopardy. <laughs> if I ever want to come back to Captain America, my job is in jeopardy. All right, I have one question about this. Mm-hmm. Why is Trapster not fighting Captain America directly? Why is there even a goon involved? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> It's like, why have this extra superfluous character when it could just be Trapster versus Captain America? Though I have no idea who Trapster is. Is this a made-up uh, yes. bad guy? Yes. Okay. And do you know where he keeps all of his secret files? In a Trapper, trapper Keeper. keeper? Oh. <laughs> it was right there. It, it really was. I got another question. Okay. Captain America throws his shield full of Hostess fruit pies. How do they stay? How do they stay in the shield? What kind of uh, science is this? It's... It's uh, sorcery science. Now, this is where the story just falls apart for me. (laughs) Now I'm not hungry for a hostess fruit pie. So now the goon is eating all the hostess fruit pies, but Trapster gets nothing, I guess. (laughs) No, because they all fell out of the shield. (laughs) See? There's so many plot holes in that one panel. Okay, so this this one did not teach us anything. Not not whatsoever. It just made us more upset. Yeah, yeah. Maybe science works different in the Marvel hostess (laughs) crossover alternate universe. But you know what? I just can't buy... The fact that these are going to stay in the shield. So, you know what? I'm out. Let's move on. Okay. All right. Now, back to the show. show. Suddenly, Luke bolts awake as he sees the vision of his friends. And it looks like the artist here used a picture of Luke from the Star Wars publicity shots. Yeah. Take, Take a look at this. Huh? Check that out. Uh-huh. That's like spot on, even down to the hair. Yeah, like those the, little, little hair, hair curls. curls. Those yeah. flips. See, Marvel, you, you can't get anything past us. <laughs> We're on to you. Yes. Now, in the morning, Luke is packing up and ready to go save his friends. And then suddenly, Ben appears to talk him out of it and gives the name of a future Star Wars film when he says, You are the last Jedi, Luke. Be patient. You are the last Jedi, Luke. Oh my, it's the right there. The last Jedi. And there's an even an issue coming up called The Last Jedi. Really? Yes. Oh my gosh. So don't tell me, Ryan Johnson. Don't tell me you weren't all over these issues <laughs> when you were writing The Last Jedi. I think I think he might have been. <laughs> We've got to ask him that. <laughs> we'll have Ryan on the show and ask him that one question. I love it. All right. Luke then promises to return and blasts away. Mm-hmm. We then go back to Cloud City, where Han is being tortured, and the narration reads, Darth Vader listens for a while without great interest, then turns to join Boba Fett and Lando Calrissian. Go ahead. You, you know what I'm going to say, so go ahead. <laughs> without great interest. Why even put that there? <laughs> and That's so he's weird. Listening, to, listening to this for a while. Han is screaming, and he's like, yeah, I'm not interested in this, but, he, but I'll listen. Is, is he on his iPhone? <laughs> don't know. Is he playing The Office? Is he playing Candy Crush? What is he doing back there? <laughs> he's he's playing Animal Crossing. <laughs> but then he says, he's lis- Darth Vader listens without great interest. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that He's means. listening for a while. <laughs> Sky Chat, help us out here, okay? Wh- why? Why? All right, until someone <laughs> until someone comes up with, with an answer, we, we got to move on here, okay? Okay, okay. Here we All go. Right. Lando then confronts Vader about not being treated fairly. And Vader says, I hope you don't think you're being treated unfairly, Cal Rizian. It would be most unfortunate if I had to leave a permanent garrison at your outpost. So that, that tracks with the film. It does. And just like you, Richard, this cleared up some dialogue for me. From the film. Oh? That that has been very confusing. Well, not necessarily confusing, but, like, I always thought that Vader was saying it would be most unfortunate if I had to be the garrison here. <laughs> like, be the garrison. And I right. thought he was staying to, to, like, be the garrison. I just thought it was odd because he kind of slurs his words there, too. So thanks to this comment, comic, that cleared it up. See? Look at this. See? I'm not so mad at this Marvel adaptation anymore. No. no I'm, I'm kind of embracing it now. Uh-huh. All right, hold on. Stacy in the Sky Chat says, <laughs> Oh, yeah, I can see by your expression, Vader. You're not interested in this. <laughs> His expression. <laughs> That's funny. I love it. All right, then then Lando says to Lobot, I've got a very bad feeling about this. Yes. No, no, he says, I've got a bad feeling about this. Yes. All right. I think only Luke had ever said, I've got a very bad feeling about this. Really? Everyone else just says, I've got a bad feeling about this, which Lando doesn't say until The Rise of Skywalker. Oh, my. 
Okay. Next, Chewie repairs 3PO in a cell, and Han is thrown in, and suddenly, Lando appears. <laughs> where, where, where was Lando? He just appeared there. Eh. And Lando lays all the cards on the table about Vader's trap. Right. Then Han punches Lando in a panel, which I still can't figure out. Now I'm upset. Okay, I'm upset <laughs> once again. Okay, well, What's okay. all this mess going on? What what are you looking at? I mean, it's clear that Han is punching Lando, and it's a little like I, I see that it's what's, off kilter. What are, what's all what this stuff on the, on the side? What is that? Oh. What, are we, what are we looking at? I don't know. There's like random people and like a window in the background with more silhouettes of random people. But what? No, okay, we see the people, but what's what's all this here? That's dust. That's not dust. <laughs> it's, it's like a. The, the artist had done half of the panel, yes. and then Roy Thomas and or Stan Lee had said, "Yeah, you know what, guys, we gotta go to press." Okay, it's, it looks like they masked out something in order to put something else in, but never got to putting something else in. There's like masked out areas of this photo that are completely white. Mm. Yeah, that's super weird. All right. All right. Oh my gosh, I never noticed that before. Wow. Uh, okay, I'm I'm getting I'm getting I'm getting upset again. <laughs> All right, now. Oh, what, what? Stacy, did we run out of ink? <laughs> we must have. I think so. Run out of ink or run out of time. Yeah. Now. That's so weird. Leia, she also suddenly appears and helps Han up, who looks like he's got a black eye. Yeah, he Where does. Where did Lando hit him? That's creepy. I don't like that mm -mm. vision of Han. All right, next, Vader checks out the carbon freezing chamber. And apparently, he remembers the time when he and Ahsoka and Obi-Wan carbon froze themselves to infiltrate the Citadel and the Clone Wars? Wow. I've never been carbon frozen before, General. That's the first time for us, too. So now, what do you think? Is Darth Vader remembering the time when oh he was carbon froze? So he's, like, gazing up. At this carbon freezing chamber, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like he's remembering, yeah. Okay. Seem, seems like that. I forgot about that. That's so cool. The Citadel, right? Mm -hmm. That episode? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. And he's like, I can't believe, Lando, you got a carbon freezing chamber here. This works out perfectly. <laughs> I know that's how they transport the Tabana gas, but just so happens you have exactly what we need. That is so cool. <laughs> Wow. All right, next, we cut to the outside where Luke flies his X-Wing to Cloud City, and he finds it suspicious that there are no patrol ships around, mm -hmm. and R2 answers with a... That's how I heard it in my head. <laughs> Thank you. Now, back in the carbon freezing chamber, Darth Vader orders Han to be placed onto the chamber, but not before Leia confesses her love, and Han says... I know. No, no. Wait. Doesn't oh, say that at all. No. Uh -uh. Mm -mm. He 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 just says, just remember that, Leia, because I'll be back. Yep. So apparently, Marvel didn't get the updated script revision. Yes, and I also recognize those words from the novelization. Exactly. Yeah. There's no "I love you." I know. Mm -mm. Wow. Yeah, Amazing. These comics and those and the novelization is written before. Right. They have to go to press of the of the uh, updated revisions uh -huh. were put together right because that's those are done so last minute because they're not focusing on that mm -hmm. they're just giving everything to the publishers and say okay just print what we have here people will figure it out all right next lando winces in sorrow at how far the price of success has taken him oh this this yeah. mauve panel mm -hmm. there yeah all right luke then enters cloud city and moves grimly and urgently forward into whatever lies ahead oh and what a great panel here this final panel of mm -hmm. the issue um it's a two-tone so you have this blue and black going on and luke is also a silhouette of blue and black coming into a doorway of white and it just looks amazing yeah this was on the cover of a coloring book i i, I love the coloring book because i love the Luke and the Luke Bespin outfit. Right. So whatever had that on it, I was I was I was all there. So I love the Leia Bespin outfit, and you love the Luke Bespin outfit. And I love the Han Bespin jacket. Yeah. Look at that up top. Oh. <laughs> all right. Now is there more? Not nope. yet, because this is the end. Next issue: Duel a Dark Lord. But 
the issue doesn't end there because there's a bonus pinup section where Marvel has asked some of their favorite artists to whip up a special interpretation of scenes inspired by The Empire Strikes Back. And here I will remind you that there is a YouTube version of this episode. So if you are listening to this on your podcast feed, I do recommend you go to our Skywalking Through Neverland YouTube channel and check out the YouTube version because we have all of these amazing images. So Richard, describe this first pinup. All right. This first one is by artist Terry Austin, and this is taken from a publicity still that apparently Terry barely glanced at. <laughs> Luke, who looks like Owen Wilson, is holding his lightsaber in one hand, but what's that hanging on his belt? It's a lightsaber. It's a lightsaber hilt. So <laughs> Luke has got two lightsabers. Yes. What's up? And then... Okay, so Han and Luke's face are the same. Like, it's it's if he had copied. It's just the hair that's different. Mm -hmm. But look at the facial structure and where the eyes are and everything. So Han is also Owen Wilson with brown hair. <laughs> maybe, well, maybe Han is Luke Wilson. Yes. And um, let's see, Leia is very odd. She she looks nothing. She looks very exotic here. I don't know. Wait, is that is that Leia or is that Nurse Ratchet? It's... Yeah, it's Nurse Ratchet. Yeah, it doesn't look anything like it's Carrie Fisher. really creepy. Now, Stacy in the Sky Chat says, Leia is in the front shielding Han and Chewie. I mean, there you go. But also looks like the the Chewbacca from the early Star Wars comics where Chewbacca was just a huge Sasquatch. Right. And Chewie is very tall and, and lean. Lanky. Yeah. Lanky, yeah. I know Pull Marvel had asked them to give us your interpretation, but I think, once again... Terry Austin just barely glanced at this publicity you, still. You gotta be, if you're depicting characters from film, you, you have to at least have some resemblance to mm -hmm. the faces. All right, let's go to the next one here. And Whoa. this one is titled War in the Ice Trenches of Hoth. Actually, no, 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 that's war. War, exclamation point. In the Ice Trenches of Hoth. Walker scouts in action visualized by our friend Michael Golden. Hi. We met Michael Golden at a convention and asked him to be on the show. Mm -hmm. So we got to reach out to him and ask him to be on the show. Yeah, we definitely do. Now, there's a lot going on here where two ATSTs are stomping in the rebel trenches. And off to the side there, there's a rebel soldier mounted on a tauntaun. Yeah. And there's just soldiers and chaos everywhere. Yeah, there's soldiers kind of like Ewoks, you know, attached to the legs of the ATSTs, yeah. like oh, trying, yeah. to, trying to hit them, mm -hmm. you know, like the Ewoks do. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot. It's it's kind of busy, but kind of cool looking because you have the ATSTs, you've got explosions, you've got the blue sky and the white snow. So very, very action y shot. And I can see where he would want to use the ATSTs because we barely saw it in the movie. We saw just kind of walking I didn't in the realize background. there was ATSTs on Hoth. Yeah. There was? <laughs> yes. Wow. Oh, okay. yeah. When Veers is talking to Vader in the hologram outside oh. the window, we see the ATST kind of. Very, you know, skidding across the, That's the crazy. plains of Hoth. Yeah. Oh my gosh. All right. But now he said, hey, why do one when I can do two? All right. Next up is a vicious interpretation titled Cloud City Confrontation. C-3PO wanders off in search of an R2 droid and discovers Imperial Stormtroopers. Instead, there, the Stormtroopers have got their helmets on. Yes, they do. All right. So the fact that they didn't have their helmets on, this one here... Well, this is interpretation, yeah, so yeah, yeah. who knows? All right. This one is by John Byrne. And it looks really, it's very nice. Compared to the previous ones, which were a little busy, mm -hmm. this one is like, wow. But it's kind of taking, Richard, this is like your nightmare. It is. I don't like anything about this. I, we don't need to see C-3PO being blasted like this. His whole torso just explodes, and there's there's nothing left of this. Uh-uh. What, did, what does he have against C-3PO? Look at this. It's not just a random droid. This is the son of Anakin Skywalker. This is freaky. This hurts just to look at it. Change it. I don't want to look at this. Oh, okay, okay. No, st uh, st uh, the, whole, the whole scene just bothers All me. All right, now. well, l l let's go to this one. Let's see. Next we have Portrait of a Jedi Master, and it's Yoda in his Swampland home on Dagobah, and it's lovingly pictured by Marie Severin. But it looks like he's been posing for this painting too long, and his whole body is now all contorted. The hump on his back looks like it's even gotten bigger. But I do like the colors in this one. It's very soft. Very nice compared so, with our previous nightmare. 
Nightmare. Oh, no, change it. Get, no, no. get out of there. Okay, see Yoda, nice and calm. Oh, nice and calm. Okay. All right, lastly, we have the duel begins. Lightsaber clash on the steps of Cloud City's carbon freezing chamber as captured by Frank Miller. Frank Miller, there's a name. Yeah. Now, this one here I can say is my favorite. Aww. We have Vader's cape flowing as he strikes Luke at the top of these very stylistic steps that that all angle up toward the battle. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I like this one the best because this cape illustration, how it's flowing, looks like the teaser to Revenge of the Sith. Oh, okay. And he had the Anakin Skywalker and his cape was, his cloak was transforming into Darth Vader. I really like how the clash of the lightsabers is forming this star, mm -hmm. almost like a north star that you go to in the sky, you know, mm -hmm. like a wish, wishing star. Mm -hmm. It looks really neat. So of all these pinups, which one is your favorite? Oh my gosh. Okay. Well. We have Let me look through these. No, don't pick that one. We have War. Oh god. We have That's it. That's it. Uh, uh honestly, so it's it's either the one you picked, The Duel Begins. Okay. Or I do kind of like this Cloud City confrontation where 3 is being blasted to bits. You're a monster. I know, but I like I like how how hard the lines are and how how very comic booky it is. Uh I'd like it. See, just when we were all resigned to the fact that maybe the Stormtrooper had his helmet off mm -hmm. in that chamber. Now here they are with the helmets on. So it just confuses me and bewilders me and I just want to... And you're upset. Yes, because that voice doesn't come from either one of those stormtroopers. Change it. Change it, please. <laughs> All right, so those were our favorite pinups. Yes. But now, Sarah, what was your favorite panel in this issue? Okay, so I'm going to have you go first. Okay. I am going to say the splash page. Oh, which one? Yeah, the one that shows Luke heading towards Cloud City. This splash page oh. right there. So it's a splash page, but yet you get a, another inset panel with a pink sky. Oh, yeah. Yeah, more of those pinks. But I just love the the X-Wing flying into, this the looks like the wheel. The, the wheel from the oh. previous Star Wars issues. Doesn't look like Cloud City anymore. And we can see how long this bottom spire is to Cloud City here. Yeah, I think it just keeps on going down below the, the panel. <laughs> So that's that's my favorite. Just like X Wing flying in. Okay, artistically, it's your favorite. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, my favorite here comes from page ten, and it's Obi Wan Kenobi's Force Ghost rendering when he appears and you know pleads with Luke not to go mm -hmm. to Cloud City, because honestly, if you just take that image, it looks like a painting that could be lifted straight out of this comic and put on the wall. I think it's just a beautiful image. The lighting in it really gets me like obi-wan is not all blue like he is in the film he's got kind of a red cloak but he's definitely more light like there's more um this is white not... parts to him that makes him look like he's glowing yeah so this is not ethereal like in the film he's mm -mm. actually there he's there but he's it definitely has more light on him mm. so it i don't know i really i think this whole image here and he the expression is just right the eyes like if you've ever tried to draw a person's face at this angle which is kind of like a three-quarter angle it's really hard to get the eyes lined up correctly um, inevitably that that eye that's further back tends to go too high or too low and so this is just right and it's a beautiful a beautiful artist rendering all right so that's your favorite panel mm -hmm. now let's let's choose which panel had the best use of color yes okay so because you let as me know. we know they they really play with colors in this Empire Strikes Back adaptation. They do. Ooh, and speaking of color, I do notice in this Obi Wan Kenobi panel that anything that Obi Wan Kenobi says, the text box is kind of in a cloudy shape that has a little blue outline on mm, it, mm -hmm. like it's a holographic, right? Um, a very ghostly. Yeah. The ghostly word bubble. Yeah, isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so what is your favorite? Color, best use of color. Okay, I'm going to say page 12, bottom left. Okay. And Lando and the guards are silhouetted silhouetted with a red background oh. while Han lays in the floor in the foreground. Okay. Because I love that red, that 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 very sinister like an... red. Like, okay, Lando is not all what Han thought he was. Oh. 
Okay. So you're so, getting that the red is kind of depicting that Lando is bad. It, yes. Oh, his, very much his so. Dudes. Very okay. much so. Yeah. Nice. Very, very sinister. And Han's got that popped seventies collar. <laughs> Han or Lando? Han. Oh. Got Han on the floor there. He's got that popped collar. Okay. Well, Lando's got a popped collar too. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not sure what Lando's standing on because he's like he's kind of floating out there. He does. Uh, Stacy in the sky chat once again says mood color red. Oh, that definitely sets a mood. Very, very symbolic. All right, now, what is your best use of color? Okay, my favorite comes from page 16. And much like you chose a whole page for a favorite panel, I'm going to choose this whole page. And this is the final page of the comic because it only uses, uh, honestly, the, the printer's colors of like cyan, yellow, and magenta, and then black and white. Um, and they've rendered various scenes in these colors. So like the panel with 3PO is that the yellow. Um, you've got Lando who's, you, you know, kind of brooding about this situation and he's in the magenta. And then you have Luke coming in and he's in the blue. So I, I think it's a really awesome way of using just very few colors to depict a, a whole entire page. Mm -hmm. CMYK. Thank you, Jeff. Yes. All right. So before we wrap up this episode, we've got to end it with Star Words. Yay! And this is the letter column at the end of every issue or every other issue where, where fans can write in and tell Marvel how much of a great job they're doing <laughs> or slam them. Yes! All oh right. my gosh. And last time, I believe we had a big slam. Yeah. So... So I can't wait. To Mar hear. Marvel isn't afraid to print the negative reviews. Right. I think they have fun responding to them. Mm -hmm. Like like this one right here. This one comes from Chris Larson. And he writes, or she writes, Okay, use Marvel mutants. After four years of silence, here's my first letter. Because you know they're waiting on the edge of their seat for Chris's letter. Right. Your Empire Strikes Back adaptation is the worst piece of dreck I've ever seen from you. Dreck? The art is terrible. Do Al Williamson and Carlos Garzon think it looks artsy to put millions of planets in space meandering around? Or is that to cover up the bad drawings? The dialogue is not the same as in the films. The good scenes and the funny ones were all left out. Boo! Please do better. Chris Larson, 2221 Mallory Place, Monroe La... Louisiana, 71201, but wait, there's a PS. I guess I enjoyed the comic so far, except for the drastic changes. That's what Chris wrote. And Sarah, how did Marvel respond to Chris? Marvel says, Chris, could you do us a favor? Next time you write, put the PS in the beginning of the letter, okay? Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> that is so... Weird. Wouldn't it be awesome if Chris Larson was listening to this episode? You know, this just, I mean, so this is like human nature to complain, right? Like when something really gets your goat, you, you make the extra effort to complain, to write in, to go to City Hall, to complain, whatever, mm -hmm. right? But when something is really good, you, you don't necessarily always make that extra effort to, you know, do something or write something nice or something. So... Yeah, I but think... I, I got to say, there, there were some other oh, letters some in ones. Star Wars where they That's were praising, good. but I just wanted to show this letter right here because trolls go back to the 1980s. Oh, and yeah. And I'm sure further than that, too. We just had <laughs> yeah. less means of expressing our anger and our hatred, and no, we didn't have so many soapboxes. That's right. Yeah. All right, well, thank you for sharing that. That was fun. Jeff Caffrey says in the Sky Chat, oh, imagine uh, the imagine. trolls if they put... Their address in, oh, yeah, oh, you would never do that, oh. you know, for uh, sake of privacy. I'm so s surprised they put that address there in the first place, even back then. Wow. All right. Well, that was a fun issue to go through. It, it is fun doing these uh, adaptations mm -hmm. of Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, we have one more issue to go to mm -hmm. complete the Empire Strikes Back adaptation. Then we can just delve into the expanded universe. Yeah. So excited for that. All right, well, that wraps up episode 436 of Skywalking, Skywalking Through Neverland. Neverland. 
thanks to all you Skywalkers for watching the live chat, for watching our videos, for commenting, for listening to the shows, supporting us any way you can, sending in your, your messages. And once again, you can send in your 10-year messages to share at skywalkingthroughneverland.com. Yes, and if you're interested in our books, autographed copies of Today in Star Wars History, Parts 1 and 2, plus the notebook interactive notebook journal, are available now from skywalkingthroughneverland.com slash book. Or you can get an autographed copy from us at Lost Con coming up at the end of November, Ooh. where we're going to have a, a panel, Pop Culture's Trivia Strikes Back. Woo! So, Sarah, what date was that? That was, I'm asking you very slowly because that is November the 24th, and our panel will be at 8 p.m. at LostCon, which will be at the, Mar the LAX Marriott here in Los Angeles. Yes. Now, would you like to support Skywalking Through Neverland? Well, you can consider supporting us through the Skywalking Force, our Patreon. And the Skywalking Force has access to bonus content, some special after parties, some special Zoom discussions. And also, I am posting our previous Zoom discussions on Disney Plus shows like Ahsoka and now Loki coming up, uh, Loki Season 2. Um, and those are available at skywalkingforce.com. Also today, we had a 10-year Skywalking Force after party Zoom, and we recorded it, and we got everyone's consent to record it. So that video is coming out today on skywalkingforce.com, the Patreon. So all Patreons will be able to view that, even though not all of you could attend, because I know everyone's schedule's different. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so that bonus content begins at really only $5 a month. And yeah, you also get coupon codes for the book mm -hmm. as well. So lots of fun things. I made some Ahsoka decals lots for the of Skywalking benefits. Force. Lots of fun benefits. Now we want to thank our sponsor, Small World Vacations, for their continued support. Thinking of a trip to a Disney park? Well, you can fill out a get a quote form at smallworldvacations.com today. Their vacation planning service is free of charge. So check it out and tell them Skywalking Through Neverland sent you. Yay. All right, Skywalkers, get ready. Get ready for this. We are part of the Skywalking Network. Skynet. Where you can find other great shows like Talking Apes, which we're going to do a Halloween special of Talking Apes coming very soon. Fun. The Max Effects Podcast. The Neverland Clubhouse. Which has an episode coming out within the week about Oogie Boogie Bash. Totally Tell Me Everything. Star Wars Ologies. And the YouTube shows Collectopolis. And today, today in Star Wars history. You can find us on social media. We are at Skywalking Pod for Twitter or X and Instagram and threads. And we have our Facebook group. So search Facebook for Skywalking Through Neverland. You can always go to our YouTube channel to watch these shows, the video versions of the shows, which we are doing for every episode now. And you can email in congratulatory messages, 10-year anniversary messages to share at skywalkingthroughneverland.com. Says Ahsoka. <laughs> now, don't forget to stick around for bloopers and other fun bits that didn't make it to the show. And... Always remember... Neverland! To our Skywalkers and Tweetwalkers, thanks for listening. Skywalking Through Neverland is created and produced by Richard and Sarah Woloski. Original music by Rob Dellinger. Creative consultant, Mark Ogushowitz. Technical advisor, Peter Heitman. Facebook administrators, Donald Wicks, Joey Pittman, and Norma Heitman. Skywalking Through Neverland is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Any sounds, music, and clips played during this podcast are the property of their copyright holders. All original content is property of Skywalking Through Neverland, all rights reserved. Sorry, had to be said. Yes, we are. Do you want to touch this? Yeah, thanks. Nope, not at all. The end. The end. Yay, we did it. We did it. <laughs> I'm bigger. Oh, okay, you can stay. Oh. <gasps> Okay.
Okay, bye everybody.